Hello and welcome to another episode of Open Studio. I'm your host, Martina Flor, and in this show I have honest conversations with artists, designers, and creatives to uncover their story and the specific tactics they use to build a business around their skills and the work they love doing. Today, I'll be having a conversation with Marcelia Leonik. Marcelia is an illustrator, art director, and visual artist that lives and works in Jakarta, Indonesia. Marcelia started her illustration career in 2015 and has worked for various clients such as Google, Netflix, YouTube, Samsung, Snapchat, and Aqua, to name a few. She's known for her colorful, whimsical animals, creatures, girls' characters, and doodle-like body of work, and for using different mediums like wash and acrylics on various supports like murals, risograph, and wearables. She's the creator of Lunic on Things, an art-based shop focused on art to wear and fashion items. Marcelia's online shop is one of the biggest and most complete art-based shops I've seen in my life. So get ready because on this show, I picked Marcelia's brain and got really good insights on how to start one and promote it. She shared how her path was that went from selling three products on a weekend market to building a shop that ships worldwide and constitutes 50% of her income as an illustrator. If you're interested in starting an online shop with your art, this episode with Marcelia Leonik will give you plenty of information around which products work, which ones don't, and how to get people to buy from you. Enjoy this conversation with Marcelia Leonik. Hi, Gila. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Actually, I'm just moving to my uh, new house, so... It's pretty empty here. <laughs> I appreciate that you're making the time to, to chat with me today on the show. Um, so, Chila, you have, start, have started your illustration career in 2015, and you have achieved a lot. Uh, you have worked for big clients like Google, Netflix, and Samsung. And one of the things that really called my attention as I, I was doing my research for this, uh, for this show is your online shop called Leonique on Things, right? Yeah. Uh, I will add yeah. the link to the, to the shop on the show notes, but I want to start there because I'm thinking of those listening right now, those artists or creatives that are thinking of starting an online shop. Um, and I want to start there. I want to ask you, how do you build an online shop with your art and I know this is a big question so you can take it from you know you can start whatever whatever you want um okay uh how do I start okay so when I was um working I used to work in an art uh, as an art director in agency right advertising agency so um that's when I started to um learn about i don't know uh, marketing or something um because some somehow i i learned how to sell in an agency right uh, even though i was a creative back then but uh, the mindset is uh, somehow is selling uh, your stuff right maybe that's the base um because at least i know a little bit about marketing and when i started um, drawing and uh, started making products um, in 2015. It actually uh, just start organically. I didn't plan to make a brand. <laughs> um, I was just uh, joining a local art market back then. And when I see like the reaction of the people who bought my art, I was only like making art prints, postcards, you know, all those small stuff like um, like a button pin. So it's not very well planned, to be honest. I'm just, I'm just selling uh, my art uh, in a art market, right? And that's how it started. And I feel like, oh my God, people actually like it. This can be something, you know what I mean? And yeah, it's just started from there. And I started very slowly because I was working, right? I was in an agency, so 
uh, I sell my art on the weekend when there's like a chance, like an offline event or like an art market. That's when I started to sell on the weekend. So everything is like unplanned, to be honest, back then, <laughs> because I just want to draw and sell my art. I, I don't know if it's like selling but i want to share i want to share my art you know and so i have i have a couple of follow-up questions to that so you started by selling some products on this yeah. weekend market right so mm -hmm. what were those products what the what were those first products that you experimented with and where those um you know was that your own investment like you invested on producing those products and later on um you you sold them or did you use another kind of technique um did you collect uh, orders and then you produce the the products how did that started okay so my first product was art prints um a small button and stickers you know one of those um just a stationary kind of stuff because it's easier for me to produce and it's relatively cheap back then because I use all my own money, my salary money mm -hmm. to produce everything. And um, I have like low stock at first because I want to sell out because I don't want to have a dead stock since I don't have much money to invest, right? So that's how it started. The first product so you start that. you started you started with like a like a low run of like a small run of of uh, copies so you made this yeah. you said you mentioned that you did this art prints and these buttons and these stickers um so you you printed how many of of each more or less i forget maybe like only um 48 or something <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for for the event you know is, um you know if there's like this event i just gonna print it and then i'm done you know and then when mm. there's another event i'm gonna print a small batch and then that's it <laughs> that's when um i started and i don't want to have like a that stock that's why mm. i start small very small that's interesting i i wonder I, I can imagine that the first experience that you had with those products was really useful in terms of like giving you information on what the people wanted. First, you you confirmed that the people wanted to buy things from you and they, they liked what you were doing. So um, how did you start to how did you start to build up on that? How did how did you go from uh, producing those three products in a small run um, onto, you know, turning that into a bigger production and, you know, what it is nowadays, which is a shop with a lot of different products. Um, and yeah, like a lot of uh, variety, I would say, right? So from that first experience, how did you start to build up onto what it is right now? Um okay so when i was first started i was alone and then mm. i asked my little sister i have a little sister who were uh helping me she's also a creative so i'm like can you help me because <laughs> this is start to get very overwhelming because I, I, i was still working right so um i asked my sister and she was also in college so it's kind of heavy for us and then When I talk about this with my best friend, she's like, oh, I think I can help you. Do you want to partner up? Because uh, I know you're busy and, um, you know, producing stuff is kind of heavy, right? It takes a lot of your mm -hmm. time. And my best friend said, her name is Tasha, but you hi, Tasha. <laughs> and she's like, I want to help you and I want to I wanna make this brand with you, you know, if you want to. And I'm like, okay, for sure, for sure. Because, I mean, I know her since college, so I, I, get, a, I get this feeling that it can work, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's how it started to uh, get big because I, I got a partnership with my best friend and 
you know, I get um, this, um, um, I don't know what's it called, teamwork, because mm. she's like hand- handling the production and I'm just uh, handling the creative. So uh, we can like, Uh, making more stuff because uh, we have this um, uh, specialty, you know what I mean? So she's yeah. just handling business, handling production, and I'm just handling the creative. So that helps. That's, that's very interesting because you sort of divided uh, the tasks in terms of like, okay, mm-hmm. she's, she's taking care of the production side of things, which is mm-hmm. really time consuming when you're doing products and you are focusing on, solely on the creative part right so i wonder also in your partnership how did you because i find it very i have to say that i find it very challenging to partner with someone uh, you have to define yes. the terms and you have to say okay how are we gonna divide the income and the investment and the tasks so i wonder how did you How did you go about this when you first started? Because also you were working with a friend, which is really challenging, right? Uh, there's like, you know, things started to mix up. So how was that process for you? Um, luckily, not, I know that not all best friends can work together, but luckily I can with her. I know it's mm. a rare occasion, but I think it's our blessing that we can work together. And, you know, we fought a lot and um, <laughs> we, we try to be as transparent as possible in terms of everything. And at first, when she wanted to be my partner, we are already like um, making this agreement that, okay, you're going to take this much and I'm going to take this percentage, you know what I mean? So mm. we already settled that up front. And after that, the... The day-to-day is just, um, you know, I get my own salary, she get her own salary, mm. you know, so, yeah, it's just fine, I think, with that kind of system. That's great because you, you do have an agreement. It's not like, hey, I will just help you, I will just give you a hand with your shop. You do have, oh, like, yeah. some sort of, you know, um, framework um, that yes. works for both of you. and. I wonder how do you decide on the products you produce, right? Because you mentioned that the first, the first uh, products you did were just three products, a button, some prints and stickers. And mm-hmm. right now you have a wild <laughs> a, a variety <laughs> of, of products in your, uh, on your online shop. So I wonder how was the decision making around you know choosing which products to do and um yeah what was that process for you um okay first of all the name is lunic on things right so i want mm. um I wanna, as simple as um, that's my name and i want to create my art on a lot of things <laughs> that's the first um thought when I make the brand so I think from there I'm expanding to things that I love first mm-hmm. you know um I love products such as bags and you know shirts so I'm just going to that direction that I love um and that I'm familiar with because I love tote bags cannot get enough of tote bags you know <laughs> I have lots of tote bags <laughs> I'm collecting tote bags and that's like my first base like doing things that I like first and then from there I expanding to um, different I don't know exploring stuff you know like uh, maybe homeware I think all these products um, is like has something to do with the stage in my life stage you know when I started mm. making my own house then I'm like, okay, I think I want to make a homeware, you know, because uh, I want to have a pillowcase, a cute pillowcase. So I think this uh, exploration is always something to do with my life as well. And maybe I want to make a pet collection because um, our team all loves pets, love cats, love animals. So 
maybe we'll make a bad collection, you know? So it's all from our own insight at first. Mm. And sometimes we also ask the audience, like on Insta story, we ask like, um, what, what do you guys want next? And then we let the audience poll and I think the polling really helps as well. And we can mm. learn what do they like. Um, yeah, that's uh, how it's that's- done. That's really useful because sometimes I, f- I feel that when I started my online shop, it was like, hey, I just want to do this. I think this is this is going to be cool. And then I put it on my online shop and it wouldn't work or people wouldn't buy it. Right. So, you know, after a couple of uh, months, I started like asking my audience what what they wanted. Right. Because that gave me a lot of information on what the people would buy. Right. Uh, and I think mm-hmm. this is really useful to use your audience to inform the type of products you want to um, create right what I wonder is you know you were mentioning just now that it makes a lot of sense the products you produce have a lot to do with your stage in life or the things you are paying attention to Um, but of course producing products or creating products involves a certain investment and I wonder um, how do you go about that investment? How do you define um, how much you're going to invest? How much it makes sense to invest? Invest? How many are you going to produce of each product? So I would love to know a little bit about this. Now that your, your online shop is big, um, how do you decide based on your previous experience, but also on a hunch or, um, yeah, or <laughs> what the audience says, what, how do you decide on how many products, how many um, units you produce for, for one product? Um, when you said my online shop is big, I'm like, okay, it's not that big. <laughs> because um, the, now that you ask how much, it's actually very small um, quantity, you know, like maybe per batch when we have a new collection, 48 still. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we're restocking every time. So um, we don't, as I said, uh, I think the key is not having a dead stock because it's going to be bad um, for business, right? For the mm-hmm. cash flow. So um, our strategy is making things in a small batch and restocking when it's uh, depleting. That's how we um, roll like maybe 48 and then when it started depleting and everything sold out, we already um, making another 48. That's how it is until now. So very small badge still. <laughs> yes. Um, and I wonder, I wanted to ask you about what is your most successful product, a, a product that you, you know, you put out there, it sold out and suddenly you keep on um, restocking on that product. Um, um, our bags, we have uh, lots of variety of products, but the best selling products is the bags. Like um, mm-hmm. back then in 2017 or 2018, uh, we made this fanny pack and it sold like a thousand or something. Oh and, my god! Oh my! Um, actually, it's a good problem, but it's, <laughs> it's still a problem, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> I only have uh, one guy who sue my uh, bags. There's only one guy, and he's like suing this bag of like for a thousand um, pieces. <laughs> But no, no, not like in a in like one go, but maybe like uh, 200 first and then it sold out. And then, oh my God, another 200 sold out. And I think we counted, it's like more than a thousand um, pieces for that fanny pack. I can show you um, the, uh, the fanny pack later on <laughs> if you wanna. And also, um, I think the laptop bags is best selling because I don't know, people love laptop bags and um, small bags, you know, we have these small bags, like a shoulder bags, that's also a uh, best selling products. So mostly bags. And what was your 
your worst selling product, a product that maybe you said like, oh, this is amazing. This is going to sell <laughs> for millions and actually no one bought it. Like, is there any product that it fell, failed completely? Yes. <laughs> yes. Lots. <laughs> Um, actually, when when we make a new collection, there's always this one um, article or product that I really like. I really love this product. Um, like maybe this shirt, for example. I really love this shirt. I'm like, okay, this shirt is it. so cool. And I'm like, okay, people will love it because I love it so much. And you know, every time I love something so much, people don't like it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we always have like an alternative right uh, like this shirt um the same uh shirt but with different illustration and that illustration is selling well but my favorite one as in this black shirt doesn't sell you know what i mean so i uh, cannot put my expectation up high <laughs> because there's always a product that doesn't sell you know what i mean So, um, yeah, and we used to have this one collection that's not really selling, like the whole collection is not selling. There's also a case, so yeah, we just discounted it because we don't know what to do. <laughs> exactly. What happens, what happens when, because as, as I hear you speaking about your shop i have the feeling that you work you're working at this point as a kind of like as a brand right where you produce a certain line of products all together so you you kind of create a concept and you think of like the different applications of that concept or you think of a, a series of products that you're going to launch all together is that correct mm -hmm. so you're thinking yes. like in terms of seasons for your for your um launches right Um, actually, we're not that, um, um, like, we don't have a season or something. <laughs> no, but I mean, I mean, you do create, you do create like a, like a line of products that you launch all yeah, together yeah. and perhaps they are related to each other, right? You, you don't, you don't do like one shirt and then you go ahead to do something yeah, totally different, yeah. we're, right? We're doing a collection. Yeah. yeah. We're doing a yeah. collection. So I wonder what happens when the whole collection is not working as well as you thought. What are uh, your strategies to cope with that, right? Um, we just put it on sale and move on. <laughs> Because um, if you be sad about it, there's, there's, will, there will be more fail uh, in mm. making this collection. So I'm just just gonna put it on sale and move on i think i i love that answer is um you know it's great that you don't hold on to it if it's not working then you just go and <laughs> find something that that will work right and mm -hmm. i wanted to ask you about your you know you you mentioned that initially you built this shop on your own. So you created these first products, the investment was all yours. Then you had this friend of yours coming on board, helping you producing the, the, the stuff, right? And I can imagine that for a long time, you were also uh, the investor in your uh, shop, right? Or that the income that you were getting from the shop was, was in, in in a part or a part of it was reinvested in the shop, right? Or in creating new products. But I have seen also that throughout the years, you have created a lot of products in collaboration with other brands. So I want to ask you, how did you engage this collaboration? What's, was this something that you intentionally uh, do or um or what's this something that you intentionally started or they approach you how did that happen mm. it's like every time there's a collaboration with um with brands it's mostly uh they email me first and i respond to it because um somehow uh i don't have the courage to email <laughs> the client first 
<laughs> so um, yeah, we're just waiting for brands to email us. So yeah, I'm manifesting uh, my favorite brands <laughs> to email me. <laughs> That's amazing. So you never had to contact any of the brands that you did collaborations for because I've seen you know there's uh, some that I wrote down here: Cotton Ink, um, Kiroko. Cassettify, all of this, um, even H&M, your latest big collaboration that I personally bought a t-shirt for my my six-year-old <laughs> son, um, and which is amazing. I hope that they will release it for adults as well because it's just it's just an amazing collection. Um, so I wonder, like, you never had to contact any of them. You, they all came to you. Um, for brands, local brands like Caroco or um, Cotton Ink, we're already friends, you know, because mm. Jakarta is a small, uh, I mean, not a small city, but uh, we have a small um, community of brands here. So when it's my friends, we just, you know, collaborate with each other, but with big brands, um, yeah, um, I'm just waiting for <laughs> them to email me. Maybe I should approach them first, but uh, yeah, as I said, um, somehow I don't have the courage to like, hey, Nike, do you want to work with me? You know, so <laughs> so I'm just waiting and manifesting. <laughs> I love that. I love the manifesting side of things. Um, so <laughs> I want to ask you, I have so many follow-up questions. I'm going to take one at a time right now. Uh, but, you know, to follow up on the on the collaborations, because I think, I think this is a great way of expanding an online shop, collaborations, right? And, um, or actually of expanding the, the presence of whatever art you're doing. I think that, you know, having your art on things that are multiplied by millions is great. And um, and I wonder, what is the kind of, you know, you, you mentioned that the brands approach you nowadays, right? Or you this is people you know, so um, you start having a conversation about it and then you come up with an idea for a collaboration. But I wonder, how do you settle down on an agreement for a collaboration. What are the terms? Can you talk a little bit about this? What are what does the term or a, an agreement for a collaboration includes? Is this a, a, a lump sum a lump sum where they pay you for your art and they um, they license it forever? Do you define the, the 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 duration of the licensing? Do you get a percentage of the sales? How does this work? Um, different collaboration of different um, agreement, right? So uh, I've worked with lump sum. I've also worked with royalties and licensing, mostly licensing. So yeah, that's um, how it's done. Mostly licensing. And there's like a period of time, maybe only for the season, for like three months or six months you know or for this just for this collection and then we're done so that's how uh, we make agreement oh great okay so for those listening just to to clarify a little bit the term licensing so licensing is about um being paid for creating a certain artwork that will be used for a certain amount of time and this yeah. is also a great way to a way, a great way of um, understanding if the product is successful and they want to license it again for a longer period, then you get paid again, right? So that yes. is the that is the magic of licensing that you are actually giving them the license to use it for a certain amount of time, and if they want to continue using it, they will pay you again, right? And yeah. in terms of royalties, is more about you get you get a percentage of the sales of the product, right? So if the product sells well, you get the percentage. If the product um, con continues to sell throughout time, um, you will continue uh, You will continue to get uh, royalties from that or a payment from that. It's like books in a way, right? So if you publish a book, yes. you will get royalties on the book. And um, so that's great. So that's agreed 
upfront and then you go on and create the product and they go on to produce it right so that's the that's the agreement you do the artwork and they do the production and they take over like the investment in a way um are you involved in the process of you know uh, producing that product or you know looking at the prototypes how how is that uh, for every collaboration, there will always be like uh, approval, not approval, like maybe like uh, discussion, like, do you like this uh, approach? And uh, this is the sample. Um, do you have any feedbacks? That's, that's like the fun part of collaboration, I think, because uh, we get to see um, our illustration uh, in their, um, you know, um, sig signature kind of thing, like, Keroko is a swimwear, so I get to see my illustration on a swimwear with their signature um, model and everything. So I think that's the fun part, um, uh, making this uh, discussion with each other, making feedbacks. Um, the process is um, uh, they're asking me to make like um, 10 or something, yeah, 10 illustrations and they will pick which one's the best, which which one can fit in their um, uh, products, right? And then they go back and they um, ask my feedback about, how about this uh, swimsuit? Do you like it? How about this t-shirt? And I think what they do, they're already like an expert in what they do. So I'm just happy with the results of what they show me, you know? So, um, yeah, that's how it's done. I think it's pretty, um, with H&M, it's pretty seamless because uh, I like what they do and they also like my illustration. So there was no much revision. So yeah, it's cool. I want to go back to something that you mentioned right at the beginning of our conversation. You, you mentioned that you were working as an art director for an advertisement, advertising agency, sorry. And that you, throughout this experience, you, exp you developed a, a sense for marketing or a kind of like a mindset around selling. And I wonder in which specific things do you apply today or nowadays for your own business and your online shop? Are there any strategies or things that you use nowadays to promote your products? Mm, I, I don't know if you ask me like the exact thing, what do you do? Uh, it's kind of hard because it's like, um, it's just in the back of your mind. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, because yes. uh, you, I worked in an agency for four years, so I kind of have this, um feeling that okay um uh, i want to make this new collection so i need to promote it you know so okay what should i make next should i make a like a lookbook like a insta story promotion like a teaser or something so i think that stuff is like um what came into my mind when um, I'm doing this marketing for the brand, you know, because that's what I learned and that's what I know. So that's how I applied it to the brand. And do you have a certain structure when you, when you release a new collection? Do you have a certain extra structure that you follow? Like, okay, we create a, a lookbook and then we create this amount of... Um, I don't know Instagram posts or do you do you have a certain system to promote your products uh, consistently? Um, not like a very strict structure, but uh, lookbook is a must, and uh, you know all these uh, Insta stories and promotions is also a must, and the other stuff around it is just um, organically. Uh, I mean, I don't have like an exact plan of, okay, I'm going to post like 10 feet of this product <laughs> now, but uh, at least I have this uh, lookbook, I have this, 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 you know, 
or they have that and then the other stuff is just um go growing through whatever come in, in my mind you know and th what do you use the lookbook for uh, are you um stalking other stores around the world or it's for the customer because mostly um the products is uh sold online so we need like a nice um, catalog or lookbook for a customer to look at because um they cannot see the real product right uh, offline so they they need to know like um like a good they need to know how it fits and like um the details maybe mm. for example i have this organic patches uh they have to see oh the patches is uh, soon organically like um with hands they need to see mm. that the details you know so i think the lookbook is for that for people to see more details of the product because they cannot see it in real life yeah i love that and I wanted to ask you, thank you so much for all the insights that you provided uh, around, um, you know, creating, uh, starting your online shop, running your own online shop. And I wonder, you know, you also, part of your work as an artist is to create work for clients. And looking at your shop and hearing you speak about the complexity that your shop has, you have now a partner to create those products. And I can imagine that this is taking up a lot of your time. And I wonder how do you manage to continue doing work for clients if this is something that uh, you have limited throughout time um, and you just take on a few? To be honest, we're just taking it slow. <laughs> When I have like client work, then... Um... I'm not working on my, I mean, online shop is not something that you have to work like every day, right? So mm. I think uh, also we have a team, right? We have a team uh, with the online shop. So um, I think team is like a big part in the online shop because without a team, you cannot, uh, it's kind of heavy to run everything day to day. So With a team, I can juggle with, with my online shop and with my uh, commission work and with my other life, you know, like walking my dog. <laughs> so I think, um, yeah, I think having a team and taking it slow is like the key because sometimes when you want to do it all and you started to say yes to everything and it started to... Of, you know getting very busy and I get anxious when I get super busy so I'm just trying to take it slow and how do you divide your time mostly when it comes to the like all the projects you take on um, do you prioritize your online shop do you prioritize um, client work how how do you go about this um, I prioritize everything. <laughs> uh, prioritize my online shop for sure because mm. uh, as my baby, um, I love my online shop so much. So uh, prioritize online shop. But client works is not every day. I mean, um, it's not like you get a client every day or every week. So. So I can manage both <laughs> for now. <laughs> And just to get an idea, what what is the percentage of like your income as an artist? How would you say it is? It, it is 70% online shop and 30% client work. How is it divided? Mm, I think 50-50 because 50 -50. the client is not, it's not every day, but I get um, salary from my online shop. So um, for day to day, uh, I rely on my online shop salaries. And if I get clients, I can, you know, save that up or, you know, um, 
use that for uh, bigger uh, needs. So I think 50-50 for sure. That's amazing that an income stream or an online shop can become such a steady income stream and also like half of your income as an artist. So you're, you're not entirely dependent on client work that gives you like a lot of freedom to also decide which kind of work you take on and which kind of projects you decline, right? Um, but sometimes when, um, you know, um, there's uh, an adulting stuff, like building a house or, you know, I don't know, some big needs then I cannot choose my client because of that but <laughs> hopefully after all my um I don't know my needs are met I can choose my client more I don't know mm. Mm. <laughs> hopefully <laughs> so right now you feel you are still in like in a stage of your career where you continue taking on Uh, most of the opportunities you, that come your way or um, how is that for you? Do you feel that you have the mm -hmm. the room still to decide which one you take on or not? Um, I think I still have a uh, room to choose because back then when I first started, I took everything, like everything, everything. <laughs> because mm -hmm. I, I need to... Um, To live with um, my freelance income, right? And mm. now that um, everything is becoming more stable, I can actually decline some of um, the client works. Not, not that, you know what I mean? Not that I don't want that work, but I, mm. I can choose more wisely now. So, yeah, I think I'm very grateful for that. And you mentioned in the very beginning that that you have not approached a brand for a collaboration. They all came to you. Is that also true for your client work, or do you do you do client reach out as an illustrator? Um, honestly, uh, I just wait <laughs> um, Because as I said, I think I'm not that confident to reach out clients, but I did reach out a uh, illustration agency back then mm. because I was super confused on like, what should I do um, freelancing and I don't have anybody to talk to. And I, I, I see like some of these artists have uh, an agency, right? So. I think I email like one or two um, illustration agency because mm. back then I thought well, if I have like uh, an illustration agency, I can get a job uh, from them, but they don't reply to me. So, uh, okay, that's the only thing um, that I did uh, reaching out because uh, yeah, I, I just don't have the courage. <laughs> That's super Maybe interesting. Maybe I should reach out more. Yeah. No, but it's, it's super interesting because despite you don't reach out for collaborations or clients and you don't have an agent, you continue having consistent work as an illustrator. And I wonder if you have identified what are the things that are um, bringing you clients because there's definitely that clients are able to find you in some way. So I wonder what are what do you think are the the touch points of clients with you is it your social media is it your website do you feel that uh, you have a, a wide online presence so that you continue getting those mm. opportunities i'm trying to find what i'm trying to do with this question is to find out you know It's, it's not an act of magic that you are getting work. Of course, you have amazing illustration work. But besides this, clients are able to come to you, right? For some reason or for mm -hmm. some, um, through certain channels. So I'm trying to identify what, what those channels are. Because those that are listening right now, they are thinking, okay, 
I also don't want to do client reach out or I also feel very, um, you know, uncomfortable doing client reach out. And I also don't have an agent. So which are the things I can do to kind of connect with those clients? I think social media for sure is helping a lot. Um, even though I'm not a very religious person in social media, like I don't post every day, but I try to post uh, all my uh, work uh, as a portfolio uh, in my social media and website. And I think that helps um, update the portfolio every time and try to show up on um, your social media, like not every day because it's kind of heavy to uh, show up every day, but maybe if there's a uh, work that you already done, put it online and, you know, have like, uh, like a complete portfolio online, I think that will really help with the client reach out. And do you feel, because I've seen, you know, doing the research for this, um, for this show, I also seen that you, sh you have interviews in very, um, very renowned portals, like, um, I, now they are not coming to my mind, like Creative Boom, I think it was, or, um, uh, it's oh. nice that, uh, so mm -hmm. I've seen, I found you on, several articles online so do you feel that 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 brought some attention into your work i think so oh yeah yeah now that you mention it i think so because um when there's a chance uh, an interview chance uh, i'll i'll try to take it you know like when you ask me to do a podcast i try to i try to take all these opportunities to um share my work you know hmm. The last things. What are what are the next um, projects you you would like to work on, or the next steps for your online shop? What is it that you are now looking forward to as an artist? Um, honestly, I haven't thought about it. Like, what's next for um, my online shop? Because my online shop is my playground. So, I think I try not to um make it like a chore or like make uh, having too much pressure on it so i can have fun and as in for my client works i think i still have like a lot of dream clients for sure and as i said i like to manifest it so <laughs> i will try to um manifest it or maybe i'll try to reach out to them now that I uh, get inspired <laughs> to reach out. <laughs> Amazing. You have the portfolio. You have the work to show. So um, so I want to, before we, we wrap up our conversation, I always like to play, or lately I like to play a game, which is um, complete the sentence. I don't know if you ever played this game, but basically what we do is I start a sentence and you complete it. Are you Again. in? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try it. So, let's start. I could never get bored of... Uh, nasi Padang. Uh, it's my favorite food, Indonesian food. <laughs> oh, I have to try that. Amazing. I'm proud of myself because... Um... I'm consistent. I'm pretty consistent. Great. I love that. I'm terrible <laughs> at... Math. Math. I cannot do math. <laughs> One day, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to oh, travel the world. If I wouldn't be doing this for a living, I would be... A fat groomer, a dog groomer, dog groomer. <laughs> <laughs> Great business idea. Great, Jayla. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today and sharing all of these insights with us, especially the ones Thank that you, you share so around building your own online shop 
with your art and turn it into not only a playground, but also an income stream uh, for your business. So lastly, where can people find you and your online shop? Of course, we are going to add all of this to the show notes. Um, thank you so much, Martina, for having me. And you can find me on Instagram uh, slash Leonic or my online shop, Leonic on Things. Um, also on my website, leoniconthings.bigcartel.com, where we ship worldwide. Thank Amazing. We are so going to add all of this to the show notes. I appreciate again taking the time to chat with me today. And I bet the listeners got a lot of great insights from you. Thank you again, Chela, for joining us so on the much. show. And Thank thanks so everyone much. for listening today. Um, see you on the next episode of Open Studio. Bye bye. So this is it. I hope you loved this episode. You can find me, the host of the show, on social networks at Martina Flor on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. If you have a question or comments, go to martinaflor.com slash podcast, where you can see previous episodes, find show notes, and send voice memos with your comments and questions. You can also watch these episodes on YouTube. Just go to martinaflor.com slash YouTube to find them. You can, of course, listen to all our episodes on your favorite podcast platform. If you loved this episode, subscribe to this podcast. And if you leave us a review, it will help others find us. Thank you all for listening and see you in the next episode of Martina Flores Open Studio. Bye-bye.